Oh, brilliant. Hello. Good morning. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello, Tracy. Hello, Sophie. Sophie, hello. this is this is Sophie Hen. Look. We are <laughs> We're being pizzazzed this morning. Sophie Hen is joining us for Books at Lunchtime and we're extremely excited about it. Sophie, how are you today? Are you okay? Um, I'm, I'm not too bad. I have to confess, there's a lot of drilling going on outside of this window. So if I do slightly lose my thread, you know, I'm blaming it on that. I'm blaming it entirely on that. But other than that, I'm very well. How are you? Yay. <laughs> Great, all the better for speaking to you. Um, as you know, because we've spoken to you a little bit before, um, Pizzazz, in fact, it was this Pizzazz, wasn't it, was um, featured in our spring catalogue for kids this year. Yeah, and the right. feedback Thank has you. been really amazing. Oh. Um, really amazing. Speaking from very, very personal experience, <laughs> I gave this to my seven-year-old who, this is the first one, who is a little bit reluctant, very capable, but, you know, is sort of one of those can't really be bothered readers. He read it in one sitting. We lost him for a while. We found him <laughs> under the table. <laughs> he then read the next one as soon as we could get it out to him. And he's now told me he's not reading anything else until your next book is out. <laughs> I'm so, going as fast as I can. I'm going as fast <laughs> as I can, I promise. <laughs> so, all that is to say, Sophie, mm -hmm. can you explain why he's so hooked? Tell us a little bit about pizzazz, please. Well, first of all, <clears throat> excuse me. First of all, thank you very, very much. That's lovely and the best thing to hear. Um, well, pizzazz um, came about uh, when I was creating a, um, a comic for my daughter when she was um, key, late key stage one, early key stage two. And, um, and I wanted to create... Um, a, I found with a lot of the superheroes that we have, because there's a lot of superheroes around at the moment and they are all wondrous and we need them to save the planet. But I noticed that the female superheroes tended to be quite, um, quite serious and quite earnest and focused, which is of course brilliant and we need them. But it seemed to be like all the guy superheroes got to do the mucking around or being a bit silly or being, you know, slightly more unusual characters. So I thought, well, maybe we need maybe we need a, a female superhero that's a little bit messy and a, maybe a, a smidge um, rubbish and just not very keen all the time on being a superhero because that's life, isn't it? You know what I mean? We can't be perfect and earnest and on it all the time. So um, so that's that's kind of how um pizzazz came about and she started off as a little comic strip um for my daughter and is now yes two very nearly three books <laughs> yeah because there's lots of comic strips in the books as well i should have one here shouldn't i there's lots of comic strips it sort of peels away into of course i can't find one comic strips yeah there we go and bits and bobs um so yeah, lots and lots of illustrations and, and things like that. So it's still very graphic and I've really enjoyed playing around with those sort of like old comic kind of kapows and whammos and all of that lovely, that, that sort of those graphic elements of comics. Um, and it's all black and white with the half tone. You can see all the little dots on there. Yeah. So everything's black and white. So I've used the half tone, like, sort of like the old more old fashioned sort of print. And it's, you know, it's designed to feel you know, quite, quite um, tactile and not too polished because that's sort of part of the, part of the message as it were. Now with pizzazz, you've got a really interesting way of, of explaining superpowers. Can you give people an introduction to how people come with superpowers? Because in this world, it's not necessarily radioactive spiders, is it? No, it's not. In, in, well, in Pizzazzi's world, yes, she, you're just born. You're, it tends to be that you're just born into a family of superheroes. Um, and so, yes, families of superheroes just exist amongst us and, um, and go around um, saving the world, albeit reluctantly um, some of the time. Um, I mean, there is the occasional freak accident in a, in a, um, in a, in a scientist lab or a or a millionaire um, getting bitten by maybe a spider or something, um, but but by and large, it's just it's just you know passed down through 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 the generations. But everyone gets a, quite a unique um, superpower, and pizzazz in particular. Yeah, this is the one of the things that I loved about this book because you get all kinds of children's books about being different, which is good and necessary, and we want. Yeah 
books that reflect what each child's experience is actually like in life. That's mm -hmm. absolutely valid and great that we have it. But because she's a superhero, that's kind of a, a great generalizer. It's not about race or gender or religion or economic status or any demographic. Everybody can relate to how Pizzazz feels a bit left out. And, and, sh and she thinks she has something to add, but it's her hair. She thinks she has great hair. <laughs> so she, she kind of is kind of misunderstanding herself a little bit. But mm -hmm. I loved that it, that's accessible to everyone, even boys and girls, because you know, um, Milo, M's son, it, it doesn't matter that she's a girl. It, it seems just to yeah. get across to everyone. Well, she's, she's quite, um, I'm not mad at the expression, but like tomboyish anyway, you know, she's um you know her costume sort of kind of gives you an inkling as to her sort of character um but it is it's that thing isn't it like she's nine and a quarter nearly nine and a half and from what I've witnessed at that age you start to become really aware of like the world around you and where you fit into the expectations that are placed upon you um and it, it and, and no you know obviously taking a superhero who has all the expectations placed upon them to save the world was, I thought was quite a fun way of really sort of blowing that up and exaggerating that but also it's that thing about fitting in and standing out all at the same time which I think is a pressure that's um whether it's unique to to this generation now or maybe whether it's just heightened because of things like social media and things like that and um, the idea that you have to have your thing that that sets you apart but also you have to kind of blend in with everyone <laughs> it's like how how the how is that possible <laughs> so it's it's also that kind of thing as well um which hopefully and from the feedback i've received is relatable whether you're a boy or a girl um and that's been really nice to, to see because i know sometimes it can put the boy readers off if there's a, a female character on the cover but i'm really really happy that so far it doesn't seem to be it's a complex little world and that's another thing and Tracy and I have talked about this before you know it's a complex little world that she lives in it's not it's not everything is easy everything is hard there's some nuance to all the characters which you often don't get in kids books certainly not in a little kind of you know something that, that is a little graphic novel like this it's you know there's quite a lot of layers to this Sophie <laughs> I'm the layers oh, thank um, you how did you how did you come to actually create pizzazz from a from a style kind of drawing point of view um well she actually um started off with green hair um but it was it was um so yes yeah, she had she had um green hair but yes it's turned it's turned orange over time but uh well it was more i wanted it to look like again it comes back to that thing of not wanting her to be too um too polished you know uh because, because a lot of the, again, the girl superheroes that we see, and a lot of girls in, um, you know, in, uh, in I would say not all the girls in literature, but a lot of girls are quite, you know, that's kind of like the, the girl thing sometimes is that they are very together and it's all, or, or they're striving for that. Um, and I just wanted to create somebody who was a little bit more reluctant, a bit sarcastic, a bit fed up with things, a bit questioning really of everything as well. Um, but yes, yeah, stylistically, well, I should probably be lying if I said she wasn't influenced by my daughter at that age a bit as well. That sort of um, just starting to have a go at, at, at fashion and, and find your identity. I wanted her to, to look a bit, um, I'd say, I want to say punky, but she doesn't look punky. Does she? I wanted her just to look like, I don't know, like she'd sort of put it together in a bit of a rush, maybe in the morning. <laughs> Does that work as a style? I mean, that's my style. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it kind of works. It, it does work, doesn't it? I, I remembered a, a friend, and this is what I see when I was reading this with Milo, is a friend and I were having conversations about being 11 or 12 and seeing someone on the TV going, oh, wow, they look so cool. And then trying to recreate it at home, but having none of the stuff. So yeah. what you get is a slight, is an approximation of cool, but actually... Perfect it doesn't really look like it and um um but obviously obviously you you felt quite cool maybe on the inside but that's sort of what I was getting from pizzazz that kind of that kind exactly of, that it's yeah. a bit homemade and it's a little bit rough around the edges um and it's a bit disheveled but for my money it's all the better for it it's got hearts hasn't it then it's got, it's got hearts. hearts um yeah so that yeah perfect 
You described that much better than I did. <laughs> one, of, one of the things that I really enjoyed about it is because is that, it, you know, they, they have superpowers and they can go off to, she says she can go to the planet Pluto and, sa <laughs> and save it from a villain, but she's not uh, to take the bus into town by herself. <laughs> um, she, can, she can do all these things. Um, but then when she has like a, a, a real problem in the rest of her life, the real life. So there's, a, it's not a spoiler to say that they're trying to put a car park over the, yeah. um, the park, is it? Uh, they're, they're going to try to save the park and her superpowers don't actually help her at all against the corporate world. And she has to have a, a bit of a, a journey and a transformation to find what is not superhero about herself, but is still super, same as all the other kids to be able to combat these um, corporate villains who I, I can't remember because it's been a while since I read it I can't remember the names of the other villains it's Mr. Um, but, Mr. But they have, Piffle. Piffle yes Mr. Piffle yeah. so he's he's the the corporate person yeah but he's completely yeah. ordinary isn't he mm -hmm. and and that's um she has to be ordinary in order to achieve that and so that's within everyone's reach and I really really liked that element of it that it, it finished up on that level Remind me, what are the names of some of the other? Uh, there was the, the baby, wasn't there, the villain? Oh, oh, yes. So the baddies, I, I yes, love the baddies. coming up with the baddies. So there's Gugu. Oh, gosh, I'm going to have to try and um, find this Gugu, who is, uh, he's in book one. Um, and that's a giant, a giant man baby. Would that be fair to say? And then there's, um, trying to find someone here. There was Mothman in here. And I think that mainly came about just because I was had the the Batman na 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 na, na in my head, um, and I quite like the idea of being able to thwart him by having a thought bubble, like a thought bulb above your head that he would be compelled to throw himself. <laughs> so, um, and then obviously my favourite, who is in book one. Hopefully, I can find it. I should have bookmarked all of these. Sorry. There's um. I obviously started with the name here and then retrofitted the powers. So there's Twerknado and there is Twerknado there. There we go. Um, and uh, yes, I mean, you start with the name and work backwards there. <laughs> Literally <laughs> in every sense. Um, but yes, yeah, so obviously Twerknado can twerk a, oh, can twerk a tornado. Um, so that's, that's, that's. <laughs> but yes, I have great fun coming up with buddies. And, um, and I, you know, often when I'm, sort of talking to, to the kids. Obviously it's all been via, via screens, but um, I like getting their ideas for baddies as well. Um, they can, yeah, very creative. Let's, let's leave it at that, <laughs> but brilliant, brilliant. I just, I just love it. <laughs> I, I also appreciate sort of getting these um, graphic novel, comic book elements back in kids awareness I shared a book with M last year called Understanding Comics which I find so powerful about how you can just with one line you can change the meaning in a, an image and th there's so much that's the one that's have you ever come across this book no but I yeah I think I will be coming across it very soon that looks brilliant I it love is the brilliant cover. it it's um sort of takes apart how comics work but it's all done as comic um the whole thing and so he'll he'll say about if you just draw one line here then that shows a shift in time or a shift in thinking yeah. or, or whatever so but you're, you're accessing all of this even having not read that book um you're communicating so much with just three shifts of the pen in her face here aren't you <laughs> yeah it's it's that <laughs> um i do i do love drawing expressions and it's um because obviously with the picture books and things like that and I like keeping things quite minimal um as minimal as like, I think that's go the harks back to my previous sort of jobs in advertising and stuff where you're just stripping everything down so I like that and I that's what I love I love those shorthand elements so I can fit more into the book so like you know you were talking about the layers and things like that all those graphic devices really help me um pack all of that into quite a you know short a short book um, but yes, I love, I, I do love drawing expressions and I do spend quite a lot of time pulling faces in mirrors, um, which apparently looks quite weird, but I think it helps. <laughs> it helps a lot. It took ages to perfect the, um, eye roll expression. <laughs> that took, that took quite a while to get that right. I want one of those for my next Zoom <laughs> meeting. <laughs> oh, 
Uh, Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> you, you, these aren't your first books, are they? You've written a lot of books and you've been translated a lot, haven't you? I, I, I had, they are adding up, yes. It's, um, my first book was uh, published in 2014 and that was where bit. I haven't got them to hand, I'm sorry. I can um, pause. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, then, yes. Well, okay, wait there. <laughs> <laughs> back <laughs> Ta -da, with books um yes so my first book oh brilliantly here we go it'll be here somewhere was um yeah wear bear in 2014 and then i created the see now this is a, a crash course in doing different expressions the pom-pom series that um he's very dear to my heart and then there's some more picture books there. And then there's this, um, oh yes, non-fiction. There we go. Ooh, oh, my wow. Size. I do love it. But I do love, um, these are great fun. And these are great fun as well. I mean, they all are when I do school visits, but these ones are, um, do you, are good do you want, fun. Do you, do you want to show us one of those a bit more closely? Because okay, they're quite so, remarkable. Well, the, the idea behind the life-size books, funnily enough, is that there's life-size bits of animals actually drawn to scale in this book. So that's actually a life-size panda's face. Wow. Um, and uh, so we go from the, the life-size elephant's toenails, just in the introduction, to a life-size bee hummingbird. Um, teeny tiny there with its tiny eggs over there. It's coming, the book's falling apart. It's been held up that many times. But then, you know, and you've got, you can try on the lion's roar. Oh my goodness. Roar even. And then my favorite one in here is the life-size giant squid eye. So that's the biggest eyeball on the planet um, on a giant squid. So I love, I mean, that's just so nice to illustrate. And then in between each life-size element is a, drawing of that creature in its environment with a few extra life-size little oh it's a life-size pea crab there um a few little extra life-size bits so that's the life-size books there um and i'm working on a on a new one of those at the moment and then sort of building up my word count slowly but surely back again um i did oh the bad nanas which they, also, look, they it, look a little bit like um pizzazz yes so it's 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 um i think pizzazz is, is what it's a little bit older um but these um i think basically slowly i'm building up my word count um one sort of like genre at a time but um but yeah bad nana started out as a comic strip as well in a similar way to um pizzazz the idea was to show that you know while while grandmothers that look like oh here we go that are lovely and delightful and we all love them and they're good at hugs and cakes and things like that maybe it'd be quite fun to have a nana that looked like that like she was up to no good and had a handbag full of things to play pranks on people and um and muck about with so it's that thing of kind of taking something and turning it on its head and um yeah and basically, I'm writing my retirement plan now. That's what's happening. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know whether it was rude to ask if that was your aspiration. I'm. I'm hoping to slowly turn into her. I don't know. It's ha the transformation is happening already. <laughs> but yeah, but they've all been building to pizzazz. So that's. Um, that's. 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 Yeah. So yeah, I've been busy. <laughs> that's brilliant. Now you've got another pizzazz coming, haven't you? Which we alluded to. Yes, it's um, Pizzazz versus Perfecto and um, <clears throat> tackling something else I've noticed um, um, in this age group, which is the um, sort of striving for perfection, which I don't, I do not endorse. Um, <laughs> um, so, um, so it's sort of looking at, at that and how we compare ourselves to other people and how we perceive other people um, and, uh, and how that can make us us feel but mainly it's silly and funny <laughs> with that running underneath it um that's the plan anyway so I'm I'm illustrating it at the moment so it's um it's all systems go <laughs> 
it's all very exciting. It's so exciting. Do, so do you, do you do the writing first or the illustration first? How does the work work for you? It really, well, it's now it's very much the writing first. Um, and especially with something like pizzazz, because there's, you know, lots of words. With, I think with a, with a picture book, it's much more a combination of the, the two. Um, and, um, and, and often a character will appear. And, and once I've drawn the character and sort of got to know the character, then I'll write their story. So that's sometimes how it works. And like, that's kind of how it worked with Pizzazz, I think. Um, but, um, but yeah, I will get all the writing will be done and agreed. And then notes for what, what the pictures will be. Because obviously, you know, even though there's like a, a lot of writing, quite a lot of the time, the pages work in the same way that a picture book does in that, the words are saying one thing and the picture's saying another. And you, once you combine the two, you get, I, I hopefully convey what it is I actually want to say. So it's, yeah, it, it's all kind of intertwined. And I'm trying to be good and not leave all the comic strips till last at the moment. <laughs> I'm doing those as I go. We have sense. absolute new respect for new respect for a picture book, which we always loved. But just in terms of how, especially if you start looking at wordless books, yes. about how you can improve literacy by looking at the pictures, by taking your eyes off the words, you can understand mm. the story better. So what you said about the the text saying one thing, but the picture mm. saying another, it really does help to grow the skill of being able to read on a number of levels. Well, absolutely. Um, and I, I feel it's so important that we we keep a visual element to to our, I mean, you know, lots of great novels with no images, um, lots of great novels that have been retrospectively illustrated as well, you know, like um, beautifully. Um, and then and then the ones that start out and can only exist that way. But I think sometimes there's a feeling that somehow books with pictures are not as valid or not as clever as books without pictures. Um, and I, I personally don't agree with that at all. And I think that, um, that you know, we can all benefit. We, we live in an increasingly visual world. Um, and I think as we get older, we can sometimes lose the ability to read images as well as children kind of quite instinctively and naturally do. Um, so I think keeping the two working together, or as you say, you know, and there's room for each on their own as well, but, but I, I'm, yeah, I think it's really important. I think, and I think it can add extra layers in places, and can um, and can engage readers that maybe aren't, you know, feeling it at the moment, and it can reconnect them with books as well. Um, but yeah, a few times I've quite, you know, overheard conversations of, oh no, that's got pictures, that's too babyish for you, and it's just my heart breaks a little bit because I just think, well, I like, <laughs> I, I like books with pictures in as well. You know, I like books without pictures in. I like, pictures, you know. I think there's room for for them all to exist, and I think we can all benefit from all of them. Yeah, yeah. I just mm. I know that um, my eyes were really opened to this when I was speaking to a parent in the playground, and her son was the top reader in the class, and she was outraged. Dad said that she wanted him to read books without words. You know, she wanted him to go just to picture books, and she thought it was such an insult. And I said it's a compliment, actually, mm. and it's taking it up a new level, really. Yeah able to form his own stories and form his own narratives around those pictures and that's reading is a, a, an individual and very personal experience isn't it they say that when you write your book it becomes the reader's book then absolutely and the a wordless picture book is so completely just the readers um, but you, I really appreciate how you don't always have your image matching the picture so that people or the image matching the words so people do have to fill that in yeah, it's lovely. It's, it's Anthony Brown that very cleverly said, and I'm going to misquote him wildly here, but he very cleverly said, you know, you've got the pictures and the words and there's the space in between that the yeah. reader has to, you know, navigate themselves. And like you say, that, I mean, how beautiful is that? How wonderful and how empowering and engaging and all the brilliant things. Who said that? Anthony Brown. Anthony Brown. Oh, yes. Well, yeah. he would say something like that. <laughs> Clever, clever Anthony Brown. Clever, clever Anthony Brown. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie, can we pick your brains for a couple of minutes? Oh. So if, if we've got if we've got some readers like my Milo and other kids who have who are now 
waiting and refusing to read anything else before July or whenever it is that the next pizzazz is, is out. What can you recommend? Pause. Can I go and get them? I'm so yes. sorry. I <laughs> love that bit from last time. <sighs> okay. Ready? Ready. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well, this is one of my absolute faves, Roller Girl by Victoria Jameson. And that's also a graphic novel. And that's about, um, again, it's, it's, I mean, look, you know, you can see there are similarities, aren't there? And fab she's got fabulous socks. I do like her socks. Um, but it's, again, it's about a bit of an outsider trying to find out where she fits in and, and, and that growing up, um, not really sure you want to grow up talk to the thing i love that book that's brilliant i'm currently just about to start the marvelous vice by by i can't wait to read that oh legend that is maz evans she's like a bookmaking machine she's mm. giving me a run for my money at the moment um but yes very excited complete with slightly <laughs> frightening i don't know if you can see a little spy hole there um and again i'm this is the one i'm currently reading which is, well, it's the proof edition, but it's Me, My Dad and the End of the Rainbow, which I'm loving by um, Benjamin Dean. And um, yes, that's, I can speak very highly of that. Well, so far, it can't, look, I'm nearly there. Yes, oh. brilliant. It is, it is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful book. Um, and then as a classic, I thought I'd throw a classic in there, talking about um, books that have been illustrated after they've been, been yes, you see? Pippi. I love she might be maybe she's a little bit younger than but I don't know that you're ever too old for Pippi Longstocking. I certainly don't think I am. Um, but I love Pippi. I love her spirit. I love the the absolute surrealness of some of it. And um yeah, I mean you just want her as your friend, basically, don't you? <laughs> great match with Lauren Child as well. I think it, oh. it really is. I heard Lauren Child speak about um illustrating this actually. Um yeah, and um, who wouldn't want a friend who can carry a horse on her shoulders? I mean, and has a pet monkey, so. Well, yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. Um, and yeah, and, and yeah, bakes cookies, cuts them out on the floor. Love all of it. Um, so yeah, so actually there's quite oh, a few brilliant. strong female characters in there as well. And um, yeah, yeah. So those, just those are the books that I, um, I've enjoyed and uh, hopefully, hopefully others will too. Oh, thank you, Sophie. Now, we've just got a quick little addendum, addendum or a postscript, I suppose, to this conversation that if I could do a drum roll, I would do one right now. But you're coming to do an event for us, aren't you? <gasps> I am. I absolutely am. I'm going to do um, it's, a, it's an online event, isn't it? I'm going to do it through through the medium of uh, the screen. And yes, yeah, so there'll be um, it'll be a Pizzazz event and we will there'll be a little bit of an introduction so I'll cover some of the ground but I have a few more visuals and things like that I'll talk about how Pizzazz came about and my love of comic strips and things like that um there'll be a reading um and then I will show everybody how to draw Pizzazz one shape at a time and um and then maybe have a yeah hopefully leave some little little creative challenges as well in my wake but yeah lot mainly giggling and mucking about but we will also be talking and drawing <laughs> and it's so exciting and that's going to be on the 21st of may yeah. so um uh hopefully by the time people see this video it's not too late the 21st yes. of may, which is a friday two o'clock for school so if you're if you're watching this and you you want to be involved have a word with your teacher but yeah. we will um we will be contacting some schools in the area so it'd be very very exciting to do come along it should be lots of fun lots of fun yeah brilliant thank you ever so much for talking to us today Oh, it's been my absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me and saying all those lovely things. <laughs> well, we can't wait lovely. for the new pizzazz, the new um, life size, and, and just to see what you've got next, really. Well, yeah, and, and the new picture book as well. Yeah, all, yeah. all coming out this year. Gosh, yeah. yeah. It's so <laughs> exciting. Oh, Sophie, thanks so much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. We'll Thank you. Bye.